Imagine this situation. You're 12 years old, sat somewhere in a classroom around the world, and today is the worst day of the week. No, it isn't Monday. It isn't raining outside. It's the day you learn mathematics. <sighs> you walk in, take your seat at the back of the class, and pull out your heavy textbook. You look through, hoping to find the answers. Your teacher begins her lesson on algebra, and your mind floats away to more important things. You think to yourself, who needs algebra anyways? The internet gives us the answers to everything we need to know. You're snapped back into the room when you hear those awful words. Your teacher says, I need somebody to demonstrate this equation on the board. Any volunteers? You panic and start furiously reading your book, trying to appear like you're so engrossed, there's no way she could disrupt you from your precious, precious reading. And then, the worst thing, in the entire world happens. You hear your name. You get up and slowly make your way to the front of class. All eyes are on you. She repeats the question you're required to solve on the board, but you don't hear a thing. Your mind is blank. You're frozen. You wonder if your crush in the front row can tell that you're now actively sweating. <laughs> you're sure that this is how your life is going to end and you're forever going to be known as the one who couldn't solve for X. You're positive that you're going to drop mathematics as a subject as soon as you can. Wow. Now, who can agree that this situation sounds pretty horrible, right? Yeah. Well, I talk to a lot of people about mathematics. Yeah, I'm that cool. And let me tell you <laughs> that a lot of people have really similar or shared stories like the one that I just described. So the good news is that if you could relate to this, then you're not alone. The bad news is that what I just described is called mathematics anxiety. I'm sure we're all familiar with the concept of regular anxiety. There's feelings of worry and tension. Well, maths anxiety is these feelings, but in the presence of a mathematical task. Research tells us that individuals around the world are experiencing higher levels of mathematics anxiety than ever before. So why is this such a shared and common experience? And what can we do to alleviate these issues? Well, before we get into that, I want to take us on a journey back in time to where this all began. The year is 1957, and the Soviet Union have just launched the first ever satellite, Sputnik, into space, forever changing the way industry and education exist. Due to this launch, education shifts to a STEM focus. STEM is defined as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It is well cited that 80% of future jobs will require a STEM education. Educators are in the current state of preparing students for STEM jobs that don't yet exist. What has happened with this heavy STEM focus is that students and teachers are experiencing higher levels of mathematics anxiety. Think about this. Maybe the teacher asked you to solve the equation on the board because she was too nervous to herself. That's often something we don't consider but we know from research that teachers are a very highly maths anxious population. Mathematics is an important filter in terms of all aspects of science, technology, and engineering, and it unpins, underpins or is the foundation of all aspects of STEM. Logic tells us that if we have early negative experiences or if we develop negative attitudes towards mathematics, we're less likely to continue with other STEM careers and therefore less likely to be successful in this modern emerging world. To make matters worse, there's still a large gender difference in STEM. That is, the current STEM workforce is clearly heavily male dominated. This gap between males and females begins early in children's lives, from about birth. Sure, we're all born with different genetics and therefore different capabilities, but in the age-old nature versus nurture debate, what research tells us is that females are just as capable at STEM careers as males, yet they're less likely to pursue them. Therefore, we must look at the impact of nurture on females developing these negative attitudes. Students as young as six years old report not liking mathematics. How can a six-year-old know that she doesn't like maths? She's barely learned to count. We have to look at her role models in order to begin answering this question. We know from research 
that you're more likely to identify with and mimic the behaviours of authority figures. This is simple and logical when it comes to kids. They copy our behaviour. We know that you're more likely to copy an authority figure of the same gender. That is, as a female, I'm more likely to copy another female's behaviour as opposed to a male and vice versa. We know that 82% of primary school teachers in the UK, USA, Europe and Australia are female. We know, and this is startling, that of all university graduates, that is, of anybody graduating any degree at university, pre-service education students, those who will be our future teachers, consistently report the highest levels of mathematics anxiety in comparison to any other graduate. And finally, we know that if you are a young female student who has a female teacher who is also maths anxious, which based on what I've just described is quite likely, then by the end of a school year, you're more likely to underperform in a maths test and say that you like maths less in comparison to your male peers. Taken together, this body of research can help explain why we see such large gender differences in STEM. But we need a solution. Well, critical to ensuring success in this modern emerging world is the ability to be a flexible and innovative thinker, otherwise known as creativity. Creativity is defined beyond your arts and is your ability to generate novel and effective solutions to problems. In one way, you could say it's like thinking out of the box. By presenting STEM problems in a creative manner, you're more likely to engage students and this is more likely to in turn result in positive attitudes and therefore less anxieties. This works for teachers as well as students and research tells us that it can benefit female attitudes towards studying the subject. Now, bear with me because what I'm gonna try and do is convince you all that we have this creative solution inside all of us. Why? Well, that's because as I look out at you today, I see a room of STEM superheroes. Yeah, that's right, STEM superheroes. Where our power is in mathematics, our tools are technology, and where we reign over science and engineering with a mighty force. Sounds cool, right? Sign me up to this science league. The issue is we don't realize that we have these powers inside of us. Okay, no. Maybe I can see that you need a little bit more convincing that STEM, and in particular mathematics, really is this cool. So I'm going to kickstart you on your own STEM superpower superhero discovery. <laughs> Next time you're out in nature, I want you to look around and find flora and fauna that represents intricate growth spirals that you see in things such as leaves, flowers, shells. They're examples of, of mathematics that nature produces beautifully. What's your superpower? You're a magical mentalist. <laughs> you look up in the night sky and see the different stars and the phases of the moon changing. You're an amazing astrophysicist, sir. You fall over and hurt your knee. Think about your cells rejuvenating. That's some superhuman strength and healing abilities. My challenge for us all is to begin this superpower discovery. Find your own STEM superpower, unleash it, and help those around you find and unleash their own. This is an example of my two cousins, and we found their superpower, their STEM princesses. That sounds pretty cool, right? And I don't know about you, but they look very engaged. My challenge is think about the STEM that you see in your day-to-day -day life. The next meal that you're going to eat, I challenge you and I'm sure that you can find aspects of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in it. Together, we can all contribute to ensuring girls become women who pursue STEM and therefore providing everybody with the opportunity to run faster, jump higher, send rockets in space, or run their households better, as being a STEM superhero is at the core of all of us. Thank you.